All right, I am going to show you how I have been cleaning this um, chandelier that I've been working on. And um, it's pretty old and pretty tarnished. And um, so I'm gonna show you all the different things that I'm doing with it. Um, it's a brass fixture. So first of all, if you're working on something and you don't know if it's brass or not, um, you can take a magnet to it. If the magnet sticks, then it's not fully brass. Um, it might be brass plated or some other type of metal. But if the magnet does not stick to it, then you're pretty assured that it's going to be um, brass. And so that's what we're dealing with here. Um, so I am going to be working on this piece, which this is one of the bobeches on the arm. This is what holds the um, glass um, shade onto um, the arm of the chandelier itself. Um, this is the giant bobesh for the center down light. Um, and this is one that I've already done. So you can see the before and the after. And, um, you know, you can take quite a bit of the tarnish off. Um, I'm not trying to make it perfect because I like the patina. I think the patina is, is nice. Um, and some people would probably even think that I went too far here, but it's going to darken up, um, especially once it's hanging and, you know, gets a little dusty and all of that. So, um, I'm not super worried about it. Um, but anyway, so this is the piece we're going to work on. So what I have is I have a toothbrush, always great. I have, um, this brush is, um, a nylon brush. I'm not, I wouldn't use metal on it cause I don't want to, you know, worry about scratching it. This is nylon, but this is a little bit heavier duty, um, than the toothbrush. And then, um, I've got my Dremel and then I'm using this Dremel attachment, which is, um, a nylon brush kind of reminds me of like when you go to the dentist, probably people who are actually dentists will tell me that I'm insane, but you know, just like the whirring and the sound that it makes. Um, so this is really easy. It's kind of like, you know, putting a drill bit in super easy to attach. Um, this also has a light on it, which, hello, which I think would be really helpful. Um, in certain situations, I haven't needed it because as I've been working on this light, it's usually, it's been sunny outside so far. Um, but it is nice that it's there. And then there's also adjustable speeds and I keep it on the lowest one because I don't need that. There's no reason for that much power. So the lowest is perfect for what I'm doing. Um, I also have um, a rag and I go through a lot of those. And then for this, I'm using Brasso and I also have a bottle of vinegar that I keep around as well. Um, depending on how tarnished something is, you can use, um, I'm using Brasso, which is a little bit heavier duty, but you could just use vinegar if it's not um, super tarnished. Um, ketchup is another big thing that people like to use. The nice thing about ketchup is it's kind of like Brasso in that it's a paste, so you can just let it sit on the fixture or whatever it is that you're trying to clean. Um, but ketchup has a really high vinegar content, um, so that's what makes that ideal. So it's the same idea as vinegar. It's just a little bit thicker. Um, and it's kind of, it's a little grosser, <laughs> but it does work. So, um, that is a good thing. All right. So I think I've shown you everything. And so now I am going to, um, show you how I'm going to do this. Okay. Here we go. So, um, the first thing that I'm going to do is put just a little bit of Brasso on the fixture. And then I'm gonna use my toothbrush to sort of get in the nooks and crannies. If this was just a smooth piece and it wasn't um, super detailed, I wouldn't bother with the toothbrush. I would just use a rag to, to wipe it on and off if it was something that was super smooth. But because it has all the nooks and crannies, I'm gonna use the toothbrush to really get in there. Also, this is super messy. So just be prepared for that. I mean, I think that's the fun part of it, but some people aren't all about it. But if you're prepared for it, it's pretty cool. All right, so my Brasso is on. Then I'm gonna use the Dremel on it. Now this, um, even on the low setting, it does tend to spit some things out at you, which I, it doesn't bother me at all, but just, you know, maybe you don't wear a wedding dress or something while you're doing it because you definitely will get lots of little black flecks on you and on your hands too. And I clean my rings a lot, like normal people probably would take them off, but I don't because <laughs> I'd be taking them off all the time. So it's on the low setting. 
And so I'm just gonna let this work itself in there. You can see it kind of splashing around there a little bit. And I can tell because I'm close to it that it, this is getting quite a bit of the tarnish off, but because, you know, the uh, brasso is still on there, it might be hard on camera to see. Let me see in a minute. See? Super awesome, right? Renovation is so glamorous. So this just gets a lot of this stuff off and I like the Dremel on this because it gets into those nooks and crannies. It's not perfect, but nothing ever is, but this is just one step. And this just, you know, eliminates the need for lots of hand scrubbing. Um, and honestly, I like the hand scrubbing. I'm a big fan of it because it's tactile and it's fun. But when you're working a piece this big, it's nice to have a little bit of assistance. Okay, so I've gotten all the way around and my hands are super awesome, right? So then I'm going to take my rag and I don't know why I'm wiping off my hands because they're just going to get gross again. And so I'm going to take my rag and I'm going to go all around the bobesh and clean off as much as I can. And already you can tell that is a huge difference. Then because the um, brass oak sort of gets into these deep crevices, there's a couple of things you can do. Um, either you can kind of use your fingernail to get in there. And that's one thing um, that you can do, but Another thing that I usually do is this is where I will put some vinegar on it because this kind of thins that brasso out that's stuck on there. So I'll just spray it a little bit with vinegar. And then I'm gonna take my rag and I'm gonna lay my rag across it. And then I'm gonna take this guy and I'm just gonna go like this. And that pushes the rag into those crevices. You can actually kind of see the dirt coming through the uh, the rag on the back side. This is also a good tool. Like my husband restores cast iron, and sometimes we do. He, he does pieces that have um, a little bit of um, carving to them. And one day I showed him this trick because it was kind of hard to get in there to to get some things out. And um, you know, if you're doing like a puzzle maker or something, this is a a really helpful little trick. And this way, the cloth can get into those spots. Um, a little bit easier and then take this off it's I mean it's not perfect but you can kind of go back and do some spot checks in some places um, but I also I don't really want it to be perfect because it's an old piece and I don't want it to look like it's brand new um, and you know again some people might think that I'm doing too much on this and taking too much patina off but um, but really, I'm okay with this because I don't want it to be perfect. So there we go. And I have, let me reach across the table. I have another piece that is similar to this that goes on the bottom. So there you go. You can see there's the before and there's the after. Ta-da!